cannot speak on these readings uh, without calling attention or laying the background with the whole chapter. Of course, uh, Luke chapter 21 is the same narrative in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13. And Jesus is describing a lot of the things that will take place before the end of the age. But what is happening here? His disciples are admiring the recent work on the temple. Herod the Great has organized the renewal and the extension of the second temple in Jerusalem. The temple was built when the Jews returned from Babylon. Herod's design is impressive with dazzling white stones and varnished gold finishes. The project is carried out between 19 BC and AD 64, which includes the lifetime of Jesus. The disciples ask when this will take place and whether there will be any warning signs. In his reply, Jesus described two crises. And the first one will be the destruction of Jerusalem, which will happen within a generation, and of course took place in 70, 70 AD. The other will be the coming of the Son of Man, which will happen at the end of the age. On both occasions, God uses gentle force against his own people to punish their sins because Jerusalem have killed and rejected God's Messiah. Uh, this is a judgment that is first signaled when Jesus clears the temple of traitors and when the curtain is torn apart as he dies on the cross and it will be completed when the Roman armies of Titus overrun the city of Jerusalem and levels the temple. Jesus declares that the world is about to enter into gentile power as foretold in Daniel chapter 12, 7. The calling of God's people will pass from the nation of Israel to the worldwide Christian church. It will be an age of stress, fear, and cosmic upheaval. In the end, the powers of heaven will be shaken. But then the Son of Man will appear, coming on the clouds of great glory to judge the world and save his people. Now, since the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, the world has been living in its final age. It is an age of both chaos and hope. But for Christians, for you and I, it is a time of purity time of self-control. It is a time of prayer and expectancy. So what do I mean by purity? Well, we read earlier on that Jesus said, Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. So as Jesus returns, of course, Jesus will either return in our lifetime or we will pass from this world and go and meet Jesus. Either way, we will stand before God, before the throne of God. But the condition of our heart has to be pure. And the second thing is that we need to have self-control. The Bible says, Jesus says to his disciples, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be great earthquakes in various places. There will be famine and pestilence. Pestilence are diseases 
And yesterday, somebody was asking me what I thought about the COVID uh, disease and whether or not it was a man-made thing. And I said, well, I have three notions about COVID. It may be a mistake that it was let out of a laboratory because they do have this virus where they test all the medications on them. It may be God wanting humanity's attention because people are busy scrutinizing, questioning the gospel, scrutinizing the message of the Bible. People are rejecting God's word. People are cursing God all around the world. And God has a way of getting attention of his people. So in all the chaos and crisis and disease and pestilence, we have to have self-control. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand side, but it shall not come near you. The third thing we need to be aware of or have with us as we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is prayer. The Chronicles says that if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land I will hear them from heaven and bring him to their sins. If my people, that's the condition, if my people who are called by my name, so you are called by the name of God, but only if you will turn away from your wicked ways, seek the face of God in humility, humble yourself, Pray, then God will forgive our sins and bring healing to our land. So we need to have with us a discipline of prayer where we pray fervently in waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the fourth and final thing is expectancy. Expectancy. Seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Why do you come to church? Why are you here today? Why are you here today? Are you here as a spectator? Or are you here in full expectancy for the Spirit of the living God to come upon your, your life? Are you here in expectancy? For the Holy Spirit to baptize you. Are you here in expectancy to receive from God? Prepare your hearts, friends. Because God is coming back. He will come back and He is coming back. And the condition of our heart is so important that we have to prepare our hearts by laying aside all malice, wickedness, deceit, insincerity. We need to lay aside all pretense and hypocrisy. All grudges, envy, jealousy and slander, evil speaking. We need to lay aside all of these to prepare our heart to meet our Lord Jesus when he returns. And the Bible says it will come upon us as a trap. It will come as a snare. And this is why we need to be prepared in purity, in self-control, in prayer, and in full expectancy, ridding ourselves from all malice. It is only under that condition that we can.
and see God. It is only when our heart is pure that we can stand before the throne of God and see Him. As the Bible says, Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen.